Good afternoon and welcome to the lunch. I'm Mini Menon and on the show, of course, we'll get to the complete uh, lowdown on what's happening, how stocks are moving and some interesting debates as always. Uh, as we begin the show, let's start off by telling you what the top stories are. Markets are in the red, led by heavyweights like Reliance. Internals underline that there is a continuous selling pressure at every small rise. And once again, no sectoral trends are emerging. In fact, individual stocks are moving on news. The much anticipated Malagam Committee recommendations on regulating the microfinance companies has been made public, but questions remain on whether this will provide the much needed respite for the sector in terms of funds and the maze of different regulations at the state level. On the face of it, SKS Microfinance says the 24% interest rate cap suggested by the Malagam Committee will not impact the company much. The stock is up on pretty high volumes on some regulation, at least in this segment. Biocon posts stellar third quarter results. Profits are up 24.6%, uh, while revenues are up about 14%. Uh, the margins also jump by over 3%. We'll get you more from Kiran Mazumdar Shaw later on on the show. Yes, banks, numbers flashing on your screen. The profits are up about 51%. Uh, that's above Bloomberg UTV's estimates, and we will also get you details on that. It's a wait and watch for the telecom sector as mobile number portability finally kicks off across the country. In an exclusive interview to Bloomberg, UTV Reliance Communications says it will not trigger any major churn in subscriber base and will in fact help the company's GSM businesses. We'll get you more on that. Moving on to a Bloomberg UTV exclusive, Vedanta Aluminum uh, uh, rules out the possibility of making a fresh application as an out-of-court settlement for its Lunjigar mine expansion. And elsewhere in the world, China's fourth quarter GDP grows by a better than estimated 9.8%, raising analyst expectations of a rate hike. And this has an impact across the market, especially in China. It's a packed day of news and let's start off with the Yes Bank numbers and go across to Diana Montero, my colleague, who's at the Yes Bank uh, uh, offices where the press conference is about to start. Uh, Diana, quick highlights. The profits are better than expectations, of course. Well, they're just uh, nine crores above our estimates, so more or less in line per se. Uh, if you look at your net interest income, it's gone up uh, around 56%. Uh, what has what actually hurt the bank is the fact that the interest costs have gone up. They've gone up around 93%, and this is higher than the cost. The in interest income has gone up by, it has just gone up by around 81%. However, if you look at uh, provisioning, it's actually come down around 2%, and that is, of course, one big positive. If you look at uh, bad loans, of course, it's not too much of a concern for the bank. Uh, stands at around 0.23% versus is uh, 0.29. Margins, of course, have come off. They are currently around 2.8% versus 3.1%. Uh, so that has hurt, of course, given the fact that uh, the bank does rely largely on wholesale funding. And that has eaten into margins. Advances have grown uh, quite uh, good, around 66% higher. And so have deposits, 79% higher than the previous year. Right, Diana. Thanks so much for that. Let's uh, glance through the markets and tell you what's happening out there. The Sensex and Nifty uh, are down, of course, uh, Led by the heavyweights, the Sensex is down over 134 points. The last time I looked at it, uh, if we can get you that on your screen. And the Nifty down 37 points at 56.54. And the Sensex coming up for you uh, on your screen down 128 points and down three-fourths of a percent. Uh, let's move to the heavyweights. Uh, a lot of the pain is coming in from two stocks, ITC and Reliance. Both companies come out with numbers uh, tomorrow. And Reliance is looking down about 2% at 960 
ITC is also looking weak as a couple of the automobile counters, uh, Bajaj Auto, Tata Motors and of course Maruti Suzuki. But there are no clear trends emerging because if you actually look at the top gainers within the Nifty, you will find a Hero Honda out there though of course uh, albeit marginal gains uh, for it. But uh, also TCS continues to do extremely well after its numbers and TCS, uh, remember that stock is close to its all-time high as well. On the volume side, interesting moves once again. You have Sri Ashtabhinaya continuing to uh, be one of the top, be the top traded counter in trade. Uh, you have a Lloyd Steel, which is doing fairly well in trade. It was up about 12% the last time I saw it. Uh, 